What is going on you guys? I hope you're all having an embraceful day. I think one of the most expensive parts about owning a car is maintenance. Always keeping up with the maintenance. From changing your oil, changing your coolant, making sure it's always in tip top shape, uh, cleaning your filters, changing your brakes, changing your rotors, getting them resurfaced. It gets pretty expensive sometimes. But it is something that we all have to take in consideration when owning a car. So today on the TC, unfortunately it's time. I shouldn't even say unfortunately because I'm, I'm kind of happy that I'm actually doing this. We're going to be installing some new rotors and some new upgraded uh, performance pads. So these rotors have actually seen their days. I mean, they're not that bad. They, ha they have been resurfaced one time already, but I decided just to get brand new ones drilled and slotted rotors, which I'll show you guys right now. If you guys saw the last video, uh, you guys already know what they look like. I'm pretty sure all of you guys have ever have done this before and you guys already know what this is. Um, so we're going to get these bad boys taken out. Get the brake pads taken out. Look at these calipers. These calipers are gonna need some love sometime soon. Apologize if there's any wind noise or anything like that in this video because it is starting to pick up the wind. Not only am I gonna be uh, replacing the rotors and the brake pads, I'm also gonna be bleeding the brakes, making sure the whole car has no air in the system because that's one of the least things that we want in the system, especially when replacing it with new rotors and new brake pads. So first thing first, we gotta take the caliper off. Actually, before we take off the whole entire uh, caliper assembly, I'm just gonna remove the brake pads by just removing this little one bolt right here. So I got the old rotors out, the old brake pads out. These are the new ones. As you guys can tell, it has a little bit more life than what the old ones had. Focus that compared to that. It's a little bit more of a life. These are the old brake rotors, stock basic rotors, disc brakes, and these are the fancy new drilled and slotted rotors. Look how much more nice they look. These are freaking awesome. So glad I'm upgrading to these. Um, something that I am going to do, as you guys can tell, it is a little bit rusty right here around these little fins where the air is supposed to circulate and back here as you can tell all in there so what I'm gonna do before I put these on I'm gonna clear coat just this top piece whatever I can and I'm gonna clear coat as much as I can in here so that way it doesn't rust it prevents it from rusting as much I, this is the first time that I'm gonna try it um, I kind of thought of this idea to see if it's actually going to rust or not but this flat piece I'm not going to clear coat it or anything like that because this is where the wheel attached. I don't want the wheel to get stuck to this piece right here of the rotor. Um, that would just call for bad news. So all this, I'm gonna leave it alone. The only thing I'm gonna do is up here because nothing makes contact to this piece and in here, nothing makes contact to that. So I'm gonna be clear coating that right now. Something that I did notice about these brake pads, the ones that I got from Hawk Performance, it doesn't have like this metal piece that the stock one has I don't know why it doesn't have it in here I don't know if you're not supposed to use it but I mean it looks the same as this as here and I mean this one has this so I'm gonna go to AutoZone real quick see if I can pick something up like this so I can make it fit onto here because it does look like it has the grooves for this piece to be in there so I'm gonna go check it out and we're gonna Hopefully get this taken care of. Hopefully we can find something like this over there. Just got back from AutoZone. Turns out that they don't have these. Only if you buy their brake pads, it comes with these. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean these up. And I mean, clean them up as much as I can. And then I'm just going to put them onto these new ones. I mean, it's just basically a backing plate for this to be pressed evenly. Because if it's just a circle, maybe it's like pushing too much pressure like over here or too much pressure on this side. Um, so, I mean, that's basically just what it is. It shouldn't be that bad if we just clean this up. So I got these pieces all cleaned up as you guys can tell as best as I could. I mean they look a lot better than how they first came off of the car. Um, what I'm going to do now is those can be good, those are good to be put onto the brakes now, the new brakes. These are, these old ones are trash. And these bottom portion or the second half portion of the caliper, is the one that without the piston has these uh, 
metal shims on the top and the bottom which are these that actually did come with the brake pads or did they come with the rotors i think i got them with the the rotors the new rotors i don't know but it doesn't, doesn't matter so i'm gonna get these taken out i'm gonna replace them here but i'm gonna clean the inside of this as well because it's probably yeah it's probably all dirty so we're gonna get these cleaned up as well So I was gonna be clear, clear coating the inside of this and the ridge of this, but it is kind of windy and I mean, I don't really think I'm gonna be able to spray correctly with the spray paint. So I'm, I think we'll just do it like this for now. I'm just gonna install this like this, maybe some other time, uh, whenever I replace the rotors again or anything like that, I'll, we'll try it out. Uh, but for this time, I guess we're not gonna be trying it out because it's stupid weather. It's too windy and doesn't let me paint. So let's get these rotors thrown on the car and one step closer to getting this job done. So originally when I first got these rotors I thought that the thickness of this was going to be a lot thicker than the thickness of the stock ones that I had. Uh, but it turns out it's actually the same thing. The, the only reason I mentioned that is because it was kind of worrying me. If I were to run new wheels and this was a little bit thicker, the offset of my new wheels uh, would have pushed it out a little bit farther out than what it is from stock while I'll be running these type of rotors but I mean it's just basically the exact same thing so we don't have to worry about that anymore now that I got the rotor installed I got that I got it held on by these lug nuts uh, we're gonna get everything put back together and I mean that should be a quick and easy install and the only thing is we do have to pr push the piston back in I'm just gonna use a uh, whatchamacallit a clamp a C clamp and just push that in. You can use a special tool, but I usually use a C clamp. It doesn't really matter as long as you get that piston pushed in. Just got done installing the rotors and the new brake pads. It was pretty easy, pretty simple, self-explanatory. Um, if you've ever done this before, it's, I mean, it's the same concept as replacing it with stock uh, brake pads with stock rotors. Um, what else? Uh, make sure when you're putting these shims, the top shims, these right here, make sure you grease them. When it, wherever it's metal to metal contact, make sure you put grease. That way it doesn't create like noise or anything like that, like vibration, like screeching. I mean, yeah, it's pretty, Pretty well on there I already pushed the brakes right now to make sure to get these brakes the the brake pads at pushed in as far as close as possible to the rotor get the piston to push it in together the only thing that's left to do is to bleed the brakes I'm not gonna be bleeding the brakes right now since as you guys can tell look how windy it is the last thing I want is to get any dirt or debris inside the container and that's gonna really mess up the brake system I'm gonna have to that's gonna create a lot of damage for the brake system uh, to get any dirt in there so I'd rather not risk it I'd rather wait till it stops being windy so I'll probably pick it up once it stops being windy but goddamn that looks freaking awesome all we need to do is just repaint this damn caliper I don't know what I was thinking when I painted it blue so it's the next day and it's still a little bit windy. It's not as windy as it was yesterday. So I, get, I think I'm comfortable enough to pour the fluid in there and make sure there's no dirt that gets in there. I'll just make sure I close the hood just to be extra safe. So since I'm by myself, I'm gonna be bleeding the brakes by myself. Where I made this little bottle right here, which you fill it up with uh, brake fluid onto here. And then this tip of the end of the hose you connect it to the bleeder valve of the caliper and all you have to do is just push the brakes and it basically just bleeds it for you by yourself without having someone help you push on the brakes um, so I'm gonna fill this up real quick we'll get this installed onto the last caliper on the passenger side because you have to start from the rear side the farthest away from the brake master cylinder which is the passenger side back and then the driver side back then the passenger side front then the uh, driver side front so this is basically what it's supposed to look like 
right here you connected it to the nipple and put a zip tie just in case so this doesn't fall off while you're pushing the brake the pressure doesn't like pop it off um, you're gonna want to create like a little loop going down that way gravity pushes all the fluid out and it doesn't try and suck it all back up that's why the bottle is on the ground you can lift it a little bit higher if you want but just I mean, as long as the gravity is going down, uh, make sure you fill it in with fluid right here. That way it's not sucking up air. So now we're just going to open up the nipple, let the fluid start coming out. You'll start seeing some bubbles. So you can see that the liquid is starting to come out. You can see some bubbles already in there, some small little tiny little bubbles. So now we're going to be pushing, uh, pushing on the brake while all that fluid is coming out. Um, we're going to try and make it so there's no bubbles at all inside this line right here. Um, also keep make sure that your brake master cylinder is not running low so always top it off whenever it's getting low so I didn't give it that many pushes and I mean it's already no bubbles already in the system as you guys were able to tell as I pushed the brake all the fluid was just going down and all into this bottle as you guys can tell it's a lot more like darker than when it started so that means that it's getting all the old fluid pushed out of it and the new fluid in and as much air bubbles out as possible. I'm going to give it a couple more pumps just in case, uh, just to be sure. And then I'm just going to do that to all of them. Um, I don't think you guys want to see me do all of them. I mean, it's pretty easy. Um, it's, it's a basic concept. So I'm going to get done with all of them and we're going to go out for a drive. Make sure all the <laughs> the brakes are working, first of all. And then we'll see if, the, if there's any stopping power difference from stock. So I'm doing the last side of the brake caliper and look how many bubbles are in this one. The other ones didn't have as much as these do. Look at that. Dude, no wonder it was feeling kind of funky the brakes when I would push them in. Sometimes when I would break, like it would break, but then sometimes like it would let off on its own. But goddamn. So let's keep bleeding these. So I got all four calipers bled. No air is in the system. The new rotors are installed. The new brake pads are installed. And... I mean, you can't really tell since I have a multi-spoke wheel, so many spokes on the on the wheel that you won't even be able to tell unless you're like up close. Um, but with the brand new wheels that I'm going to be getting, of course, you're going to be able to tell a little bit better. But you can see them right there. They do look really sick just with the painted caliper. That's all we need. So now that we got all that done, we do need to go out for a drive to kind of test out the brakes and the rotors, see how they perform together. But before that, I just want to talk about a little bit since I do have leftover rotors and I did make a project like this, a stool. I'm probably going to be doing that with my rear struts i'm probably gonna put something together it's gonna be a little bit shorter than this but i mean might as well make some car part art some more since i have parts laying around so let's go out for a drive now let's go see how these rotors and brake pads perform so i tried going out for a drive right now but i was hearing a noise so i decided to come back home so i have it jack jacked up in the front i have it on drive my foot's on the brake but so you guys can hear the noise watch It sounds like it's a metal-to-metal -metal contact, so I'm going to have to take off the wheel and see what's going on. So I found out the issue. The issue was the dust cover was hitting on the bottom portion down here. This little lip down here, so I had to get a screwdriver and a hammer, pushed it back. Um, I guess that's what, what the issue that was causing the, the like screeching noise. Um, it looks like it's wearing evenly, the brake pads. Watch, let me put it on drive again so I can show you guys. It's not making the noise anymore. It was kind of scaring me in the beginning. I was like, what's that noise? But now, it's not making it anymore. And it was just on this side. Hard to push the brake. I'm slowly pushing the brake and you can already feel it stopping. Look at that. Barely touching the brakes. Barely putting my toe on it. So I can already tell it's going to be really good, a good feeling on the foot. So let me put the wheels back on. Let's go out for a drive. Let's make sure it's not making any noise anymore. Make sure it's all good to go. So I've been driving for a couple more minutes, trying to break in the rotors and the brake pads, uh, going, stopping, going and stopping. Um, and it feels pretty comfortable now with the pedal and everything. Um, at first, like when I would brake, like if I were to brake hard, it would make like a, I don't know, like a, it would make a noise. So right here, I'm, I'm driving casually. Driving, I'm gonna try and get to 15. It's right there, 15. Brakes really quick. I don't know if you guys were able to hear that, like a I don't know if that's normal. Um, I didn't used to hear it on my old ones. Maybe it's because it's barely breaking in, 
not 100 percent sure i'm gonna drive like 30 minutes and see if it's still making the same noise or maybe that's what it's supposed to do maybe because of the rotors the way that it's gripping the brake pads or maybe because they're performance brake pads i'm not sure this is my first time buying performance brake pads so i'm not really sure what i'm supposed to be looking for um i do feel like the braking is a lot quicker it does come the car does come to a stop a lot faster which i know that's working but i don't know if it's supposed to cause like any different type of noises or anything like that so let me know i'm gonna keep driving though i've driven the car for about 20 minutes already i went to go get some panda express go get some lunch to eat um currently eating an egg roll but um i mean the brakes feel fine now i don't hear any noises it doesn't like make when I brake like super hard. It doesn't make like any at all noises. Like no more. Look, look at what I was explaining in the last clip. I think it's because the brake pads had to break in with the rotor, of course, just like anything else. Just like anything else, when you're replacing it, say if you replace it with stock stuff, you still gotta break it in. So now that it's broken in, it feels like it's broken in. The the brake pedal feels a lot better. It feels a lot more more how do you say it more responsive more responsive now when braking i don't have to put so much force with the brake pedal anymore to in order to brake so i'm really happy with how it's turning out i'm almost heading home right now i'm almost there so i'm trying to wrap this video up um watch let me try and break right here I'm do one last break like 65 ready ready Look how low, how fast it goes and drops. So quick, it drops so quick. I definitely do feel a difference. So I'm really happy with the purchase that I made. I'm so glad I upgraded to slightly performance brake pads. So they're not the high tech ones, the high, high performance ones, but they are a little bit performance for the street. So. I think that's what I'm gonna end today's video, guys. I'm kind of happy that that noise that it was making in the first place, that it was just a dust shield, because it was driving me nuts. I was like, no, I thought I installed something wrong or something went bad. I don't know, I thought something broke. Um, but I'm glad it was just a dust shield. So I think that's where I'm gonna wrap up today's video, guys. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any questions or any concerns regarding your install or anything that you guys want to know about or me to clarify make sure you guys drop it down in the comments down below i'll make sure i try to respond to everybody as soon as i can as soon as the video goes up i try taking the first five minutes ten minutes to reply to everybody giving everybody a, a heart whoever comments so thank you guys so much for watching guys i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out and embrace yourself